Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are reading graphs. So what to expect is that we will talk about line graphs, scatter plots, histograms, circle graphs, bar graphs, and with each of these we'll do a little bit of practice just to make sure that we're reading them carefully. Let's get started. Line graphs. A line graph is typically used to show change over time. So we are comparing one or more things over time. Um, the example I use here, car speed at, at marker 1, marker 2, marker 3, and the finish line of three different cars. I'm just showing their, their general speed that they are going. So you could ask questions such as, who was going fastest at marker 3? And you would look here at marker 3 and compare the three values there. The orange car is going the fastest at marker 3. At marker 2, the gray car was going the fastest. Um, and at the finish line, who was traveling the fastest? This doesn't say who won. It just says how fast they were going. So again, um, it's just showing change over time. One common example of this, one that's often seen in the news and such, is monitoring ocean temperatures for change in climate. So they'll measure temperature change over time. That's just a common use of a line graph. A bar graph. Here I'm, I have a bar graph of hair color at Comic-Con. Bar graphs are used to compare similar things in a single category. So example here is hair color. We're comparing hair color. Um, how many people had a certain hair color. And a common example of this would be popularity of different television programs, like at 7 o'clock, which show how many people were watching each type of show. And you could show it in this sort of way. Now, in this example of a bar graph, a question I could ask would be, how many people at Comic-Con had red hair? So you would look right here. Six people had red hair. How many people had jet black hair? Well, two people had that. And then another common example would be how many more people had red hair than blue hair? And you would look at those two items and compare them. How many did? Right, there's two more people with red hair than blue hair. There's a difference of two. You could subtract six minus four, or you could just use the graph to look at the increase. That's some examples of how you would use bar graphs. Speaking of bar graphs, a histogram is a type of bar graph. Um, it's a type of bar graph that specifically shows a range of data for a single category. So the age of people who watched a certain video. It's not always the most accurate because of the ranges. So let's look at this one, for example, and do some critical thinking on this. Let's say there was some kind of a video and we're looking at the age of people who watched it. There's only one person who was younger than two who watched this video. There were five people in the range of two to four, 17 people in the range of four to 10, and then two people who were older than 10 watched this video. Um, the, the challenge with this is, first off, my ranges are not consistent. And that's something to make sure to look at with histograms. You want to make sure that their age ranges are consistent. Um, you know, 4 to 10 is a range of 6 years, whereas the other ones are um, less than 2 is only 2 years, 2 to 4 is only 2 years, and then older than 10 it could be up to, you know, 99, 100 years old. So this is a, an example of kind of a bad histogram to show you um, as far as critical thinking goes, what to look for when you're looking at a histogram. You want to look at consistent age ranges, and you can ask similar questions to what we did in the bar graph. Um, how many more people between ages of 4 to 10 watch this video than, than people who are older than, than 10, things of that nature, just comparing different um, items. And a common example of this is age ranges for data collection purposes. It's a really common use for this. Circle graph, often called a pie graph. This one shows 
parts of a whole. So the whole amount is the full circle, and then each section shows a part. It's often showing percentages. Um, you'll, you'll often see percentages listed in there. And one common example is how much of a budget goes for each department. Because your budget is the whole amount, and then you could say I'm spending this much of my budget on food, and this much on uh, clothing, and this much on housing, and this much on you know, buying new calculators for my calculator collection, whatever. Um, or the example I see here, my favorite farm animals, um, cows, horses, chickens, and children. Please don't judge me. All right, uh, scatter plot. our next one. Scatter plot is a splattering of data that is not connected using lines. So you're given just pieces of data um, from different, um, in this case, people. Um, the example that I said. I said a grade that you earn on a paper and the time that you spent playing video games. So this is, in this example, maybe you asked this many people how, how much time they spent playing video games and what grade they earned on a certain paper. And so you throw up all of the information on there. It feels like you're throwing up sometimes when you do a scatter plot. You throw all the information on there and you see if there is a correlation. They will often show a correlation that you don't really know about until you put the data up there. A common application of this is to put in a line of best fit. A line of best fit is like this orange line here. You want to have about the same number of dots above and below the line, and um, it basically shows the general trend of the line. In this case, it's called a negative correlation because it has a slope that's going down. Let me show you an example of a positive correlation where I've put in a line of best fit that has a positive slope. This would be the high score on a video game versus the time spent playing that video game and um, something that might not have any correlation um, your hair color versus the letter of your first name though that information could be all over the place on our graph and have no correlation whatsoever and there's a lot of information that has no correlation whatsoever and that's often shown pretty effectively using scatter plots so a note about graphs, make sure to read them carefully. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Here are some other ones that you can also click on. Like and subscribe, share it with your friends. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.